Hello and happy Monday to everyone. Hello and happy Monday to everyone. I changed the video quality and it looks like my face is bright again. Oh well. I'll get the lights set up at some point. Doing a couple of different things on this stream today. I started a new configuration to try and mess around with some of the image quality. I uh, have a new webcam on and a new background. We're using a blue screen background instead of a green screen. So it should block out the annoying headrest that I had. Uh, but today, um, hopefully we don't see any of that. So. So we are going to be hopefully wrapping up the Azure Functions piece that we've been working on for a while. Let me check the audio to make sure I, yep, I'm good. I accidentally turned off the audio of last Tuesday's stream. Uh, so for those of you that are new to the stream or new to the uh, YouTube videos. I've been building a contact management application for the last oh three or four months. We started off with next to nothing and uh, now have a fully working app. Although working is subject to uh, interpretation. Uh, you can follow along at the repository github.com slash jaguadagno slash contacts. If you view the outline, you can see a step-by-step -step guide. For everything we've worked on uh, from the beginning, we essentially started off with file new, created our domain models, our management layer, data layer, wrote unit tests, etc. cetera. Uh, we've published all of that. And now we are looking at the application from a standpoint of we've just uploaded images and now we want to create thumbnails with them because the size is kind of manage, kind of go all over the place. So we started off with creating some cues that allow us to kind of signal the notification that we have new content or, or something to do. And then we have an Azure function in the background that does it. So let's take a quick look at that. So we created this Azure function, which if you were on the stream on Tuesday or watch the previous video, it's changed a little bit. I did some tweaking to it. There was a lot of hard coded values in there that I kind of removed and uh, changed it up a little bit. I also did uh, what's called dependency injection in Azure functions, which is a relatively new thing i think uh august it was enabled uh, and i also put a little blog post on it so if you want to take a look at it you can go to my website at josephwoodagno.net and search for the most recent blog post in this particular case but dependency injection with azure functions we'll cover it kind of talks through the high level of what you do uh, so let's just highlight a couple of quick changes here. You'll notice we don't have the thumbnail dash uh, creation queue in there. We're using this little syntax for percent signs. This tells the uh, Azure function SDK to look at the application settings for the thumbnail queue. So if we look at our local settings JSON, it's going to grab this value and return this thumbnail create. So it stops us from hard coding there and we can change it here. Uh, let's see what else did we do. This might be different. I think I changed and created a separate storage account for it just in case we want our queues sitting in a different storage library than our uh, containers for blob storage. But in most cases, they're the same. The only other thing that changed is I am now using a library from Six Labors called Six Labors.ImageSharp, I believe. 
instead of just using the system dot drawing, which became a proverbial pain in the butt to try and use. So the gist of it is we are looking here at our container. So we get the container reference. We then create a copy of the image stream. We then download it using the library that we've talked about before in the stream, just Azure helpers storage, which downloads it to a memory stream. And then do a quick check to see if it was downloaded. If it is, we reset the position to zero. And this is something because the Azure SDK essentially reads it all the way to the end and doesn't close the stream. Uh, another workaround for this is to copy it to a brand new stream and that resets it to zero. We then use the six labors uh, image object to load the image. So now we're loading a picture of it and then they have this mutate function which allows you to run different operations on it. In this case, we're running a resize with the settings width size and the settings height size. So this programmatically just picks the number from settings. There's no math or anything behind it. in this particular case. We're pulling 120 by 120, but I can go and change this at any point to resize the image if we want. Uh, we then create a new thumbnail stream for it. We save it using JPEG. So essentially, we would take a copy of the in-memory representation, save it off as a JPEG file in memory. Again, reset it to zero because as it writes, it writes all the way to the end. It doesn't kind of go back. Then we use these three lines to update the image. So the first thing we do is create an instance to the block container. So in this case, we're going to our settings and pulling in the thumbnail or the uh, storage account and it's saying we want the thumbnail storage and then we upload using the same image name that was passed in we're uploading the thumbnail stream which is the image we saved on line 46 and then we're overriding it because we don't want to have to worry about the differences then log it out so not much really has changed as far as the functionality with the exception of this part here, which is the creating of a thumbnail and getting rid of some of the hard-coded values. So let's kind of walk through some of those changes. So you notice here at the very beginning, I now have a new method or a new public property, or sorry, private property called iSettings. We pass that into constructor. And now this is no longer, the class is no longer static. It's one of the quote unquote features when you're going to the uh, dependency injection version of Azure Functions. So here we're injecting in the settings and then I can use the underscore settings throughout. So what kind of magic did I need to do to get that to happening? Because before, if you remember, this was a static class and this was a static method. So let's go take a look at the startup and take a look at it. So there are three things that need to happen. The first is this. You register in the assembly. You can do that in your configuration file or using this attribute. I prefer doing the attribute just because it's clear and not too many people go and update the CS proj file or VB proj file, depending on your language. And you say what class you want to control the startup of it. In this case, I want this class function startup to be the starting class. And the name doesn't matter. I call it startup because in the ASP.NET Core, it's called startup. So I want it to be consistent. So in theory, you can copy and paste. Slight difference is that this class needs to inherit from functions startup, which is outlined in the Microsoft Azure functions, extensions, dependency injection. Then from there, 
we override the configure method, we get a builder class in there, and then this should look pretty similar to what it did with uh, the dependency injection in the ASP.NET because it's built on the same engine. The only difference is, is you, uh, the builder, you have a services method, and then there's all the add singleton, etc. So here, I'm adding a new singleton saying whatever you want, an instance of I settings. Um, the first time, create this instance of a new settings class and then access it. So our I settings has a list of all the different settings that we would use for our application. Uh, and those are all saved here in the local settings. Then have this settings class, which does an environment.get variable, and then whatever the settings needed. The settings inside of Azure Functions are slightly different. It can still use uh, app settings.json as well as lots of others, but the environment.get environment variable kind of exposes all of them. So it is actually taking it from that app settings file and kind of creating those environments for you. This is not to be thought of as the you know normal Windows or Mac environment variables. It creates its own kind of environment inside of the SDK. So nothing's really different for all these except for the resize because I wanted that in int. I'm using one of the libraries I wrote called JosephWoodDiagno.Extensions, which has some overrides for taking objects or strings. In this case, I'm saying take this string, try to convert it to an int. If you can't convert it, give me the default value. In this case, the default value is zero. So I'm saying if the default value is zero, give me 120. Otherwise, give me the actual value of it. And that's just some optional cleanup, just so in case someone messes up a setting, it's there for us. Okay, so all that being said, our application now will execute it. So let's go and verify that it works. So I am going to pull up our disk and stuff. So let's go here. And these are all under local storage account, emulator. Storage content. So this one, like I mentioned, is for the blob store or not the blob storage, the function storage. We have two images here. I'm just going to delete them for now just to show that everything's still working. And there is an image thumbnail. Let's delete those. Yes. Uh, let's make sure these were all good to go. Refresh, nothing there. Refresh, nothing there. Let's make sure there's nothing in the queues. There is one item in the queues, so let me clear you out. Nothing in the poison. I remember from Tuesday, poison queue is if something fails five times in trying to process in this thumbnail create queue, it automatically moves to the poison queue. So all of our queues are empty. Let's start up the app. Let's get our API running. Ooh, that's not the API. Let's get our API running. Nothing's changed with the API. I did start that one. Hopefully it didn't start with IAS because I don't think that one was working. I'm not sure where it's starting. Let's see. Yep, it's waiting for starting IAS. I did not want that to work. I don't know if that's going to work or not, so I will stop that. I gotta delete that profile. I don't know why it keeps coming back in. Let's launch the API. 
via the internal Kestrel engine. And then let's launch the web UI. Now, one of the things you'll notice differently when we had the setting up using the traditional way of Azure Functions, when we were running here, we had the ability, sorry, and I have to clear the cookies because it's still broken. I couldn't fix it over the weekend. So let's remove you. Now, if I go to the function, the way we did it before, there was a little play button here. Well, because we're using it with dependency injection, that option is no longer here. So we have to uh, run it the traditional way, like a regular application, not just run that particular one. So I got this context function thumbnail creator, and I am not going to hit any breakpoints right now but I will put it in debug mode in case anything fails. So if this works right, the second I hit save in the application for an image, it should automatically create an image and then come and process the image behind the scenes. So fingers crossed. I think I need to create like one of those fancy stream animations where I press a button and it pops up a, a GIF that says fingers crossed since I tend to say that a lot. So let's make sure this is running. It's almost running. As soon as it says the function name, that means it's good to go. Yep, it's good to go now. So let's go back to our viewer, let's click contacts, wait for the authentication to happen. Now if that's happened. Now that that's happened. <laughs> sorry, it's taking a minute. Uh, I don't say it a long time. Usually it doesn't take that long. Uh, so let's go and edit number 21. And ignore this value. It's only because I manually deleted it. So let's go and browse and put a new image of me. I really got to remember to clean up my downloads folder before I start the stream. Not that I ever have anything bad in here. Let's go with an old, actually, let's choose this avatar that uh, David Neal created, AKA at Reverend Gee created for me. I was when I was a lot heavier. So let's do that. Click upload. It worked successfully. I got the gigantic picture of me here and his signature. Now let's take a look at the code. It's not flashing. Everything is good so far. So let's take a look at the Storage Explorer and see. So if we click on Contact Images, we have one now. I was created at 115, which is now. Click on the thumbnail. Oh, we have a thumbnail image. So let's go and download this one and let's see what it looks like. Let's download you to Download. I'm going to prompt you for a folder. Select folder. Now, if I open up Explorer, oh, I'm getting this message to override because I forgot to delete it. I'm just going to choose yes to override it. And now let's look at our download directory, override it. Come on. So we have one here downloaded at 116. Let's take a look. We hover over it. It's 120 by 120, which is our dimensions. 
And let's open it up with, I think this says photos. Yes, okay. And there it is. If I do the image properties on it, mm, yeah, it's actual size. Doesn't have the ability to see properties, I don't think. Nope. But we can see through the Windows Explorer that it is indeed 120 by 120, which I think you can see here, 120 by 120. And let's see what the actual image size was because I forgot to show that. Is this, hopefully it's not 120 by 120. Details 1024 by 1024, which we can see right here. 1024 by 1024. So it worked. That was awesome. It was a little bit of a struggle. Not so much that it was more so the actual image manipulation. It used to be a lot easier in .NET Framework to change images, but apparently a lot of that was built on uh, the Windows GDI, and as you could imagine, if you're developing on a Mac, the Windows GDI is not there. Uh, so they had to kind of rewrite that from scratch. Luckily, there's a couple of libraries out there that really focus on that, so I was able to take care of that. So if that's done, we need to get that into our prod environment to make sure that it's working. Uh, we're going to have to create all the settings and everything else. So let's start there. So let's go to our Azure Explorer here. And we are going to upload the function app. Now I could do it with the deployment scripts that we currently have, but I think I'll save that for another episode. I think actually what I want to do is break out the Azure functions into different repositories and break out the web API and the actual web app into separate repositories so that they can deploy individually, but probably do that in a future episode. So these are our function apps. I don't know if I created a function app. Let me go and take a look. Let's see, while this is loading, uh, I don't think I did. Let's double check. Now function apps need to, to be, need to be deployed to an app server. So we already built an app server called Contacts Web. Actually, I think we built a couple. Yeah, that's the app service plan. And then we have the individual services. So let's go and deploy that. So luckily I can do that straight from Writer. You can also do it straight from Visual Studio if you want. Uh, but the deployment is a little different now because of the way I set it up with this. So let's stop all these projects. And I think I can edit these same settings. So let's go and do that edit configurations. Ooh, I pulled up a really big screen. Sorry about that. I changed monitor sizes and screen resolution. So trying to get the kinks worked out of that. So this is how it runs. And let's see if I can publish it from here. Let's to publish the web app. 
Let's see if I just create a new one here. Yeah, there it is. New public function, publish Azure function app. And that's gonna want the name. So let's give it a new name called uh, let's call it coding with Joji dash function. That should be good enough. And then we are going to want to create a new one. Oh, wrong thing. So I'm going to copy this because we want this to call publish. And then give it the coding with OG functions. Put it in that account. Associate it with that resource group. Use that hosting plan, which is perfect. We wanted to use that existing storage account because remember it needs a storage account. And that really should be it. Could do other actions before launch, like if we want to do a launch a browser, build a project, publish, run grunt tasks. Right now, we don't need to do anything like that. So click OK. And it should create the publish as we see right here. Publish Azure function. So let's go and hit the play button. On it and it should publish it out you'll notice in here it's going to do a couple of things essentially it's going to build it first then it's going to create a zip file then use the azure resource sdk to uh, create it since this is a brand new function and then upload it once it's done we should get the fully qualified url to it There you go, see here it compiled it. Now it's creating the projects, it's building up the zip file. It's stopping the function, which it does all the time because it have, has to be fully stopped before. If you wanna see what they're actually sending, you can go to this zip file. It gets deleted pretty quickly. It'll try up to three times to, to publish it before it fails. First one usually takes the longest because there's so much extra work that it had to do. Ooh, time got that time. I've never seen a timeout before. If this one fails, I'll probably have to go check to make sure that the function was created. Yep, it was created. So that was just probably a fluke. So deployment succeeded. And now it's available here. I can click on this and get to that link. I actually don't even know what that link shows. I think it just shows that, hey, the app sits there. While that's loading, I can come here now. If I refresh this, I should see that coding with Joe G functions, which is right there. And click on the functions and then see a bunch of stuff like of it. It looks very similar to the app hub, which I would imagine because it really is that. The only thing that's challenging is the configuration. The configuration looks the same, but there's actually nothing in it yet because it doesn't publish it. So well, let's close my face. Let's see if there is a helper way of doing that within here. Uh, let's see. No, not there. Oh, I think I can do show properties and that allows me to create them. Yep. That allows me to create them. I don't know if I can add to it directly. I'd love to be able to right click here and just choose upload them all. Let's see if I can do that. Edit, no, tools, no, show, 
do, 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 do. I know when it's a other function outside of this, you have the ability to upload it directly, but I don't think I can here. So I'm gonna have to manually go and create all these settings. Let's see if there's a way to import them on the portal. Uh, to, to do advanced edit. Oh, sweet, there is. I have to convert those to JSON. So let's see if I can easily do that. So we're already in JSON now. I just have to change them. So let's copy that. And this is going to look messy for a bit, but we'll get it working. So I essentially want this times how many permissions? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and 11. 11 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And I wish this screen was a little bit bigger now. So I'm going to do all these backwards just because they're right here. And this we're not going to want to use development storage, but I am going to put it in there for now. And then we will fix it afterwards. Contact image container name. Contact dash images. Next one is thumbnail queue name. It should be thumbnail dash create. And then actually, let's just do this. Use development storage. I probably should have just edited this outside. But live and learn. Just about halfway there now. is coding with Joji contacts. The only problem with doing it manually like this is that it's prone to error big time. Which we'll see. Then use development storage equals true. And next one, you notice a lot of these are repeated. In theory, I could have used like the storage account name and the storage account the same for all of them because in, technically they are, but uh, I'm leaving room for growth in the future if we decide to offload them somewhere else. This provides us the ability to change it relatively easily without needing to worry about, you know, re-architecting things. They already did it ahead of time. And two more, we are good to go. Last two are the resizes. Resize height and resize 
with. So I'm just going to paste both of these because that's an easy one to change. And this should be with WIDTH. And we want these to be 120. Actually, I'm going to change this to 100 just so we see that there's a difference. And then let's remove these. And then we should be good. Click OK. And they are all there, which is awesome. But we're not done yet because now we have to change the names. So let's go and get the storage account names. Oops, sorry, gotta hit save first or I just lost everything. Continue. They're saved and ah, I'm just gonna actually open this up in a new window because we're gonna go back and forth between these two. Only because I'm going to copy and paste some of these. So let's go to your configuration. And now we should go to Blob Storage Account, I believe is the one we want. Yeah, that's what we want. So let's go and copy you out. No, that's not the one I want. That one. Yeah. So let's go here to the configuration and we're gonna have to change that in three places, I think. Right? Change it here. Change it here. Don't want to use developer storage anymore. Thumbnail blob storage account. Change it here. And then the queue. Where's the queue? Thumbnail queue storage account. Okay. So now those are all updated. Q names should be the same, storage account, all that's the same, resize, so everything is the same. So now our settings are accurate, but there's one more thing we need to do now, besides save and refresh. Now we have to grant permissions to these functions to be able to access both the blob container and the uh, queues. So let's go and do that. Let's navigate back to here. Uh, we actually want to go here. And let's go to our storage account. I think we did this a week or so ago. But there's also a blog, po blog post on it. Click access control. Let's do roll assignments to see what we have in there. And we need a couple others. I edited the web one, which um, I was doing some testing around to see if I had permissions to it or not. So storage queue message sender. So now we need to add a couple more. So this allows the web app to be able to send data and queues. Now we need to do one to allow us to be able to retrieve messages from the queue. So let's go and select a role. We want that to be storage message processor. I believe this allows us to read messages and take them off the queue. Coding with GOG, let's see. Oh man, please don't tell me that's the case. The function is not in there. I think I have to enable it. For the access identity control, which I did not do. Uh, do, 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 do. Why can I see it? If 
Maybe turn it on. Should be able to see that. That's not what I want. I don't want security center. We want to be able to say that this function app has access to the others. I thought I did that right here. May I choose function app? Oh, that's probably why. So I want to do CWJG. Why did I not find it? No function app with managed identities was found. Did I not give it? Overview. Access control. I know that there's a setting that you have to do with some of the apps to turn it on to be able to use that feature. Um, maybe it's under identity. Yep, didn't turn it on. <laughs> so let's hit save, enable, assign system identity. Once I assign that, it successfully assigned. So now I should be able to refresh this. CWJG, there it goes. Hit save. So now it has the ability to check queues, and now we're going to have to add the contributor role for it. So let's go to storage, blob, data, contributor. I can actually do reader also but the contributor has both coding with g functions hit save so once this refreshes let's just do a refresh we have the contributor cwjg functions the web that allows us to save images and get images uh ignore that one that's my test library and then processor so this allows us to read messages off the queue this allows us to send messages to the queue which should be everything we need now if i go to the function and i'm just going to restart it because permissions were applied as well as updated settings so let's refresh it and i don't think I don't think I need to make any changes to the web app because I believe I made those ahead of time. But let's take a look at the queues to make sure that they are all there. Uh, where are you? Oh, Storage Explorer is gone. Let me restart the Storage Explorer. I must have closed it on accident. And it's loading, as you can see by my head. So if I look for the image, JWD contacts, I think I already created the queues. Yep. Or those are the storage libraries. Let's double check to make sure the queues are created. The queue is created. There's nothing in the queue. And nothing in the thumbnails. So next step is for us to try and run it in our environment. Where did we go? This one. So this should show nothing, and I don't expect it to show nothing. So let's go to the application, CWJG contacts, and delete the cookies to get rid of that bug. 
the contacts. Should be loading. Now the moment we've all been waiting for. Azure AD to finish loading. Come on, you can do it. You're a big boy. I know it's a holiday weekend in the US. There you go. So let's click you. I don't know what's in there. It's always going to say 21. That's the ID and that's what we use to save it. Let's pick a different image. Uh, let's pick Mia DevReach. Click OK. Click Upload. Cool, the image was uploaded, no exception. So let's go take a look at the Azure storage and hit refresh if the function worked. This should have some data for us. And where's my refresh? Nothing, let's check the thumbnail, create. The message is still there, so our service is not running yet. So let's take a look at that. I thought I restarted it. It looks like it restarted. No. Oh, wait, no. Let's check the configuration and make sure we got all the configuration settings right. There's nothing secret in here, so we can do advanced edit to make sure. Oh, some of it's secret. First two parts. Storage account is right. Contact storage name is right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. All that is correct. So it is running. What did we miss? And by we, I mean me. It says it's enabled. Code and test. So it should be loading from the thumbnail queue name and using the thumbnail storage. So that stuff is right. Let's go and take a look. The message is still on the queue, so it just means that Azure didn't pick it up. Otherwise, it would have put it into the thumbnail poison queue. So let's see. Uh, we want thumbnail queue name. Thumbnail create, so that's fine. Storage account is fine. Storage account name is fine. So all that is there. Uh, let's double check the permissions. No user assignments yet for this. I don't know if it needs to be here or here in the storage account, but Storage account says the functions should have the ability to process. You know the message is there. Should have the ability to access the container. Let's just make sure this is the right property.
Oh, that doesn't help me. Let's Google that property or that permission. Role assignments. Storage queue message processor. Allows for peak, receive, and delete access. Okay, it should be exactly what we need. Uh, let's just double check it. Uh, storage. Peak retrieve to learn which actions are required for a given operation. Click on this link. Click on this link. There's a link, but here it goes. Uh, let's see, list queues, get queue properties, break queue, don't need, delete queue, don't need, put messages, get messages. And it looks like it's right. Not getting a permission error. Let's just restart the service. Oh, I hit refresh and now restart. My bad. The icons look pretty much alike except for that one little extra error. <sighs> Silly. Now at this starting, this should disappear pretty quickly. See if this is restarted yet. Use some memory. The execution count has not gone up, but it's hard to tell because this graph is so small. See the activity log if we can see anything. No, can't see anything there yet. The other thing we can do is go to advanced tools and check the logs. Tell you when it started and reran and everything. Let me double check that. Cues are still there. Uh, do, 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 do. Settings, deployment, source, files, processes. Yeah, that's it there. Next thing they do is to check. Oh, where's my logs? There's a log setting that I can view. I want to go through that because that shows some secrets. Uh, where are you? Let's see the command line. Yeah, that's not what I want. That's not what I want.
Should be a log viewer. Services running. Uh, let's see the host config if that's anything. Nope. It's been up for two minutes. Let's see if this is still going. I'm still there. Something's not listening to it. Let's check the functions. Do to do to do logs. Nope. Log stream. Why aren't you running? Oh boy, what did you miss, Joe? So we'll check that function is running. It's enabled. Integration. Name of the queue for which the message will be pulled from. Huh? Dang, it's not there. I know it's there. Let's close you out. Go and view those files again. Uh, do, 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 do. Go ahead and test. Thumbnail Q storage account. So I'm pretty sure that was created. Let's just double check you. Mm. <laughs> Configuration. Thumbnail Q storage account. Show the value default. Alt endpoint protocol HV account name. Should be right. Let me check the other just in case I mistyped something, but. I thought everything was correct. Let's check what you have for the connection. This is the same value that wrote it. 
I go and double check. The only difference is this is, says settings, which is no big deal. Just make sure this is the same default endpoint protocol, HTTPS, account name, JWG, contacts, endpoint suffix. So all that is correct. It's still saying it, it it's a good. Still saying it can't find it. By configuring the value of extension, what did I do there? Oh, uh, and if there's something I didn't set here that writer created for me by default. Let's use 64 bit integrated. That works right. For whatever reason, it's not loading that. That setting, it's not loading the configuration files. Thumbnail queue storage account. Let's go double check that. Thumbnail queue storage account. Values, right. Why are you not working? Oh, uh, what else am I missing? What else am I missing? I wonder if I change this connection, if that helps. Thinking that uh, nice to know what this translates to. Watch us out. It's running. Let's check the integration again. 
trigger is Azure Queue Storage. Give it the name of input to queue. Name of the queue from which the message will read. I don't know why I didn't see that. Let's just do Azure Key Storage binding. Or it's not Azure Key Storage, Azure Queue. Azure Function Queue binding. Do a Q trigger. It set the connection property, specify the app settings that contains the storage account to use. It's shown in the following example. That is what I have. Let's see if it looks like something else. This is exactly what we're doing. So the connection name is wrong. Connection, the name of the app setting that contains string you can use for this binary. The app setting begins with Azure Web Jobs. You can only specify the remainder of the name here. You leave the connection empty, it uses the default. Huh, that is weird. I mean, I guess I can change it to the default one, but I don't understand why that would happen. Now let's see if it worked. Restart it, put the queue. Still going, nothing in the thumbnails. Image still sits there. I didn't clean this list up. I'm like, where'd that come from? Let's go delete those so they don't confuse me again. Let's restart it. Let's go and check this. Still there. Why are you not pulling them up?
Let's see if there's something else that triggers. You trigger attribute. I read some of this can pull it straight from. The knee. My, if that doesn't work, that stinks. was a way to nope ah that's weird Let's check the trigger one more time, and if worse comes worse, I'm going to revert back and hard code the values, which I really hate to do. Let's just check, see what the documentation says. Yeah, this looks like it's hard coded. Thought I read somewhere that it doesn't have to be hard coded. So this needs to change now to thumbnail dash create. And then I'm going to leave you off to use the default. This is a terrible practice, by the way. I'll uh, we'll probably come back at some point and change this. I guess the settings works with the local JSON, maybe. Let's republish this. And see if that works. Okay, that's done. Let's go here and check the job. Let's close all these other windows. Check the activity. Chit show that we just published. Yeah. Review. Check the queue. Refresh, it's gone. Check the thumbnails. Thumbnail's not there. Let's refresh, see if there's a poison, and there's a poison message. So it failed. Now let's go take a look at the logs and see what happened. Where do I view logs? Let's go set it and turn on App Insights.
Mm. Oh, it's way too many to go through right now. Let's go to advanced. Click go and see if we can see that one. Close you, close you, close you. I know it says use curl, but I want to see if it at least shows me the last couple. It's no web APIs. So it read through it, but still failed. And I can't see the logs, so I don't know where it failed. Let's see if there's something in this log. So if not, I just turn on application insights. It's creating. Let's see if the log stream shows anything. Meantime, let's move this back to main queue. Appear here. And we can check App Insights. Oh. <laughs> That's not hopeful. Ah, here's the failure. I'm guessing it's something I missed, probably a permission. But we'll see once it's done loading. Okay, that's weird. It told me that there were problems. No results. I know it's actually running. I wonder if I have to reset it, restart it, turn on application insights, enable.
I create the resource by enable it for it, I guess. Now it's connected, so I'm just going to restart it again and reapply the message and see what we get. Oh, so it's executing. Cool. I know it's running. And I restarted, so let's remove this message back. If you're not in there, you should be in here. Move you. Move you over to thumbnail create. Pretty gone from there. It's probably back in here. Let's see what happened. Insights. Your data. Ten failures. Let's see what's happening with these failures. See what it says. End to end transaction. Good. Tell me what it says. Oh, am I not logging enough detail? Guess I'm not logging enough. Ah, here it is. Cool. No valid company ever while executing function. Ah, permissions name is wrong. I got the wrong account name here. Create thumbnail image, no valid combination of account information. That uh, means when the configuration items are wrong. Let's go to functions, configuration. Let's just do show all values to next to each other. Thumbnail create count CWG contacts. Let's correct. Thumbnail blob storage account. Storage account name. Thumbnail create. So all those are correct. Which one is? Uh, 
That's something I want to see. Ah, uh, this is what I want to see. Span. Should tell me the wrong name that I sent in. Nope, doesn't tell me the name. Doesn't tell me the name. See if this one does. I'm oh, just parsing her. Okie dokie, so I have to figure out why this is happening, and the easiest way to do it is going to be, I think, here. Settings, that blob storage account. Uh, that's what's wrong. I think. I think that's wrong. At the account. And the name. Make sure I'm using the right overload. This is wrong because I'm not using the credentials. So right now it's just using the name for it, I have to tweak this to use the new credentials for um, production. So like we did here in the registration for it, uh, where are we? Just like we did here, we created different for local, we need to do this. For production, we need to do that. So I need to kind of tweak this for here to get that to work. So there's really no reason to show that online. Although I kind of want to do to put this to bed. So that note, I will be right back. Oh, let's see if I can do this now. Uh, create a thumbnail image. I need the environment, which I don't have here. Can I get the environment from here? Where are you? Uh, I want the startup of the function. No, I don't want to move that one file. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's going to have to require some Googling because I need to figure out how to get the hosting environment.
I, I'll have to figure this out. Maybe I'll do it later on today or just do a quick check afterwards. That's all I got for now. Hopefully you learned something out of it. Uh, that's it for today. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on any of the items below or any of the social media points on the screen. Thanks. Have a great day.